Hello and welcome back to our series on Leading with Impact. I'm your host, Samantha Brighton. Today I'm joined by storyteller, entrepreneur, and owner of Orlando Creatives, James Spradlin. Over James's career, he has worked with many companies from Fortune 500s to charities to help them tell powerful stories that help impact their brands and their visions. James is passionate about authentic storytelling. Thanks so much for joining us today, James. Yeah, absolutely. It's my pleasure. So you're used to being on the other side of the camera and you're used to being kind of in my shoes. So how do you feel about being a leader in front of the camera today? Uh, I feel like I have less control and I feel more vulnerable. Okay, so what advice would you have for leaders that are taking on a role that is different or maybe even completely opposite to a role that they're used to taking? Uh, I mean, I think in, in my experience, whenever you do something new, it's always a little weird and there's always an adjustment period. And so for someone like me, which I imagine a lot of other leaders are like this too, like you want to do things well and you know, you want to do your best. And sometimes like that's just not going to happen the first time, you know, it's going to take a little while for you to get used to that new role or that new opportunity or that new situation. And so like, I have to like be reminded usually by other people to give myself grace that it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, just try to be yourself because it's really about like starting and then building off and, and iterating from there. Absolutely. I think leaders will definitely relate to you about feeling like they have to be perfect all the time. As someone who has listened to other people's stories, what advice do you have for other leaders to listen without interruption? So when I'm not working, so when I'm not filming someone, personally, it's actually very challenging for me to listen and not talk. <laughs> So uh, when I am doing an interview and I am filming someone, you know, it's uh, very clear to me that my role is to capture their story. And so um, unfortunately in my personal life, because my mind is constantly going and, you know, I hear someone say something and it triggers another thought and something I want to share, I have to like be very intentional. And I don't, I don't do it well, frankly, uh, sometimes, you know, I do it horribly sometimes. I should probably take my own advice. So, you know, I'm not speaking from an expert here, but like when I'm having a conversation with someone, like really focusing on trying to hear and listen and capture and understand, even if I don't agree, uh, to understand what they're saying, you know, and understand uh, not just even what they're saying with their words, but, you know, what they're saying with their body language and what they're saying with, you know, kind of the, the context of what they're sharing. So in storytelling, the narrator is often the hero of the story, but you have uh, spent your career where you've told stories where others are the heroes of their own story. Was yeah. this something that you had to practice or was this a natural ability of yours? Uh, I, I think it's definitely both. You know, you, you have to learn like language and the type of storytelling I do, you have to learn the language of a cinematic standpoint. Camera angles matter a lot. So, you know, even down to like the technical part of like, is the camera at eye level? And what does that communicate? Is the camera up looking down on the person? What does that communicate? Is the camera below a person? There's all these kind of subconscious things that you have to learn how to do. That being said, yes, there is for me, uh, I've always enjoyed hearing really good stories and I've always enjoyed um, sharing really good stories that have changed me, stories that have impacted me. And so when I meet people and they share a story with me, I mean, this could be literally like, like, I don't know why, but like strangers just come up to me and start talking to me. And within a minute or two, it's very normal for some reason that they start sharing with me deep personal things. In my opinion, I don't really look like a super approachable person, you know, like, I'm not like walking around looking like I want to have a conversation with people. And so like that happens and I can't explain that. And my, my wife is always saying like, you met this guy where? And he told you what? That is something that is a natural gifting that like God's given me to be able to connect with all different types of people from someone who's on the street and struggling with drug addiction, you know, all the way up to someone who, you know, is super powerful and wealthy and you know is in charge of like say a big organization and and everybody in between um so for me like i have a genuine interest a genuine curiosity of like why are people the way that they are why do they do what they do so what advice would you give to other leaders to help them 
listen to other people and take themselves out of the equation. Yeah, I think, I think it's tough because, you know, I mean, as human beings, you know, we're all, in my opinion, like naturally selfish. You know, we process life through our own lens. It's just starting with checking yourself, like checking your, your, your heart and like your, your intentions. And even just being, being self-aware of like, why are you even talking to this person? You know, a lot of times like you might realize, well, I'm kind of using them to, so that I can talk. Okay. If that's where you're at, like that's where you're at. But then that's where you have a choice of saying, I want to, I want to hear this person. And also again, going back to kind of what I said before, like don't expect your, your emotions and your motives to be pure, you know, in every situation, you know, for me, like I was telling a friend yesterday, like, I often experience like four or five emotions simultaneously. My advice is you have to start with, do you actually care what they have to say? And are you being vulnerable? Are you listening? Are you learning uh, for what they have to say? Because if you are, what's most likely going to happen is that what they're going to say is going to impact you. And once it impacts you, it's really hard to not tell other people. And so even like when I'm doing film projects and I go and I interview people before I even finish creating the story, I come back and I tell my wife, I tell my family, I tell my friends, you know, sometimes I even share like on Facebook, Hey, I met this person. And this is something that they shared that was like really powerful. What are the next steps for you outside of this pandemic? What does life look like for you personally and professionally? Uh, for, for me, this time has been very difficult uh, in different ways, and I won't go into that, or this will be like 30 minutes long. Um, one really good thing that it's done is given me the space from being expected, these social expectations, but it's given me the space to be able to experience um, clarity on like what really matters most. If you have a, a priority list of a hundred things, if you don't put them in order, nothing's a priority. Everything can't be a priority. Even 50 things can't be a priority. And so what it's done is it's really shown me um, in my relationship with God, like, like how much that's a priority. It's shown me how much my relationship with my wife, how much of that's a priority. And like she works full time as well too. And we have a little boy, you know, through this period, God's given me a lot of clarity on on where to focus and where to keep marrying and where to uh, follow him into. And that's into, into the type of storytelling that he wants me to do. And there's these other things that I, I want him to give me clarity on because I want to be in control. I want to feel in control of what's going to happen. But what I was even telling a friend last night is that like, of course I need to obey and step forward and stepping out and taking these risks and these things before I, I could even do this stuff over here. Stop waiting for the full roadmap, you know? And if anything, this whole time has shown me as well as the rest of the planet, we really don't have as much confidence in what's gonna happen tomorrow as, as we thought we did. And so I think that, you know, can be devastating uh, and eventually it can be very humbling too, you know, as far as like knowing that your domain of control and impact and change is a lot smaller. I think that's really fantastic advice. And I thank you so much for being really vulnerable and sharing with us um, your thoughts and feelings. I think it's important for other leaders to see the vulnerability and then emulate that as well. So I think that's really, really great. So thank you so much for yeah. joining us. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. For everyone watching today, I actually have a challenge for you. I challenge you to sit down and have a conversation with someone that you might not know very well, or maybe has a different life story than you, and sit back and listen to their story. And then tell us about how their story had an impact on you. If you enjoyed today's video, please follow us on Facebook and Instagram, as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notified about all things leader impact. Thanks so much for joining us and see you next time.